Coventry on the night of November the 15th, 1940. One of the heaviest raids of the entire war had left this proud city in ruins. Its people shot and homeless, its lovely 15th century cathedral shattered and wide open to the sky. King George VI went there himself to inspect the appalling damage and lend courage to the people. It was in 1948 that the first result of their efforts to rebuild the city became evident. The Queen, then Princess Elizabeth, went to inspect the plans. and she performed the opening ceremony of the new central square. If the spirit which the citizens of Coventry shared on the night of November the 14th, 1940, can be reborn in the hearts of our people today, then we shall indeed see the fruits of peace. The Christian symbol of sacrifice and forgiveness. In 1950, Sir Basil Spence's design for the new cathedral was chosen. Then, in 1956, the Queen came to Coventry again, this time to lay the foundation stone. I declare this stone well and truly laid. From the ruins and ashes, the phoenix began to rise. Symbol of a new hope, a new age, in which the bitterness of war could be forgotten. It was in this spirit that young German craftsmen came to Coventry to lend a hand. In London, Sir Basil Spence examines one of the panels for the great altar tapestry. He'd commissioned Graham Sutherland to design it. The artist's vision is now realized by French weavers in this magnificent Christ in glory. So, an act of faith reaches its climax, as inside the new cathedral, the congregation awaits the arrival of the Queen. party is the Bishop of Coventry, the Right Reverend Cuthbert Bardsley. Welcome to you all. In With his pastoral staff, the Bishop traces out the first two letters of the Greek word meaning Christ. This is to signify that the church which he is now to consecrate belongs to Jesus Christ. That thou wouldest vouchsafe to purify, hallow, and consecrate with the everlasting plenitude of thy sanctifying power, this church. The bishop then consecrates the font, a boulder brought from a hillside near Bethlehem. The final act of consecration is performed at the altar. With thy holy and life-giving spirit, vouchsafe to bless, hallow, and consecrate this altar for the celebration of the mysteries which thy Son ordained for a continual memorial of himself. Now a pure white cloth is draped upon the altar. And finally the Queen signs the deed of consecration. A moment of great rejoicing for Christians everywhere. Here is a magnificent offering 
to the glory of God. of color from the baptistry window. The delicately engraved angels and saints decorating the Great West screen. A golden replica of the charred and twisted cross. The building has been described as a new fortress of the Christian faith. In keeping with this spirit, Epstein's giant bronze St. Michael, the cathedral's patron saint, triumphant over the devil. Magnificently fashioned out of pink sandstone and surmounted by a flying cross, built in the service of God for the needs of a modern industrial city. plan which the Queen saw in 1948 has now been translated into reality. From this focal point, they rebuilt a city worthy of the people who withstood that terrible night in November 1940. Nor have more ancient traditions been forgotten. The future needs of the community are fulfilled in simple but striking architecture. The planned central shopping area from which road traffic is excluded, making it safe for shoppers and their children. A new city and its new cathedral proclaiming the majesty, eternity and glory of God.